I don't know whether you can see too loose, he's in the window there. Cheesed off with me again. I'm still not going to take it for a ride on this one until we've got it sorted. Oh, it's good to get fully dressed and then realise your keys are in your pocket. No one's ever done that before. So here we go. What is it? Thursday again? And what we've done is we put those four bolts and spaces in the subframe, which should give us increased rigidity, as it were stop things flexing around. Now the last time I rode it I had the the uh, VW rear rim on with that adapter and with that it was shaking its head. Which way we go? We might go the Forbes Road. Um, And um, yeah, that was that was no fun. So I've gone back to the other, the the one the the rear wheel adapter and rim that came with this bike, which apparently is off a, a Ford Telstar or something. And I can tell you already that it still doesn't feel very good. Okay, I mean, I still have the option of putting the steering damper back on. I wanted to ride it first of all without doing that. It's still doing that weaving thing. I thought that would have been cured. So now I'm completely mystified. It's really strange. I'm running out of options. It still it wants to shake its head again, so I'm going to have to put that steering damper back on. Um, and it just sort of goes everywhere. I thought I thought this would have fixed that. You know, it's it's um it's quite bizarre. So not quite as bizarre maybe as me. It still wants to shake its head as you can see. It's still just weaving and wallowing. And, and and to lurch in that way, lurch in that way. But I can. It's bloody terrible. Um, the rear wheel adapter for this chaser. The rear wheel adapter for this bike is in four pieces. So you ride along at about 50 kilometres an hour and it feels almost safe. <laughs> Though not very. Um, but you know, you haven't got a hope of riding this thing anywhere 
worth going any kind of long distance and that's what I bought it for to eat some miles compared to the Harley well the Harley actually eats some miles pretty alright once you get it going along you know I'm only riding the side at the moment basically because um, Tilly's you know still learning and uh, and I need to readjust the rear shocks they're a bit too a bit too stiff you know uh, but other than that it's going along fine you know and I have ridden it long distances before though there was that episode where I broke the rear chain <laughs> that wasn't much fun this is just terrible this bike now I have to start looking at other things you know like I'm gonna have to pull the tank off I think start looking for bent frame broken frame something like that you know it's um just not satisfactory you know putting the steering damper back on will just sort of mask the symptoms you know very disappointing I'd sell this thing if I had no conscience now I think this is Gunning Bland Creek I mean I can revisit the setup but this isn't still isn't a setup issue yeah and, and I said you know putting putting steering down back on it's really stiff that one too you know it needs something lighter just to sort of take the edge off it, you know. Got where the blinkers are. Um. You know, it's probably got a little bit too much toe in, but that's not going to cause that kind of stuff. How weird. You can see it shaking its head like whoa, 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 whoa. Take a hand off the bars, you know. It's going all over the shop. I'm almost tempted, and I think I've mentioned this before, I'm almost tempted to take the uh, take take this front end off and just put telescopic forks back on. Which is a backward step in some respects, but yeah it is gunning Glen Creek. Um, now a bloke told me the other day that um, this is full of yabbies. It's a horrible nasty looking bit of a swampy looking thing isn't it? But apparently it's full of yabbies. So I might come down. I haven't got any traps or anything anymore but I might just come down one day or make something up or, or just make a few lines up with uh, bits of old meat and stuff you know. this bike. Sorry old girl. I suppose I should check tyre pressures again too. I'm sort of running out of time for today though. So I imagine it'll be something for the weekend to fiddle around with as if I haven't got enough stuff to fiddle around with. Anyone got any ideas? <laughs> I'm, I'm danged if I know. It's wandering everywhere. Why is it wandering everywhere? It's going like just this going like this. And I've checked at least by you know feel and stuff wheel bearings and, and that kind of thing and play in the swing arm and whatnot and everything seems okay so what are we left with the subframe is now mounted the way it should be 
the uh, oh yeah the, the rear wheel adapter it's in four pieces four spaces essentially and there are four bolts two lots of four bolts sorry the inner lot of bolts that hold the, the adapter onto the uh, to the final drive you've got to mount that first and then try and mount the other three pieces plus the rim and line up four long bolts and you just can't do it by I can't do it by myself I had to get a bloke help me luckily you know the Kiwi bloke who helps me the house was there and then it was an okay job you know um, well, this bike just doesn't feel safe you know look at you crows the funny thing is though, when you hit bumps, straight up and down bumps, it doesn't make any difference, it tracks fine, you know, but if you get these, like, you can see this line here, these, uh, these, uh, irregularities in the road surface, that's really reacts to those. Anyway, never mind. It is what it is, we shall persist, you know. What's that old saying? Flogging shall, shall continue until morale improves. Something like that. More crows on the road. Get up there, you birds. Strange. Strange motorcycle. about the puddle again one thing about this bike is it feels really sort of like it should have another gear it, like I'm, I was riding along in top gear then probably on 70 kilometers an hour <laughs> but I'm used to a rocket 3 I suppose which sits on uh, 120 at 2800 rpm blown blinker by old bulb here somewhere haven't I? Or oh, the leak. Oops, messed the turn off. I guess that means we'll have to go up here and turn around. I wonder if it's just got no, not much air in the front tyre. I better check that. I'll do that stuff on the weekend. I got other stuff I've got to do tomorrow. I've got to put a a cutting belt on my right on mower. I mean, it's winter time here in Gaia. In the winter, the grass stops growing, but here it's still going because we're getting enough moisture, you know. I'm looking for that other gear again. But I can't take Tilly on this thing. That's for sure. Look at it, shaking its head like... <laughs> I don't know. A mother-in-law. <laughs> Sorry. Whee. It's got a very good turning circle though compared to the the Triumph for sure and the Harley no wonder I mean if I was a real pessimist I'd be thinking something like the subframe has been you know moving around for so long that it's bent everything else and I still haven't put a right hand mirror on here properly it's amazing how awkward that is without a right hand mirror
turns in really well. These old BMW blinkers are weird. <laughs> Mind you, the Harley ones are pretty weird too. There's one on each side as well. With the with the cancel switches on that side underneath. Sorry, on top of the right hand blinker. I'll just go off here a little bit. Now that we're out and about. You know, a bad motorcycle ride's still better than no motorcycle ride. And that's the funny thing about this thing. You know, it's um you get it on the dirt. I wonder if this makes does this make any sense to anyone? You get it on the dirt and it seems to handle better on the dirt than it does on the tar. I mean what does that mean? This is a bit slippery actually. This Now, because I suppose there's so many bumps and stuff going on that it takes your mind off the fact that it's going all over the road. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> this is where the neighbours were camped the other night. On the weekend. They live in Forbes and they've got this land here and their father's got a block over there and blah blah blah. And they come here with their couple of caravans and friends, you know, like and all these kids, seems like there's about a hundred kids. There's probably about six of them I suppose, which is enough. <laughs> um and uh and just spend the weekend, you know, in the country sort of thing. Even though, you know, Forbes is not exactly Sydney, is it? But that's a break for them, which is good. Um, and they built a tree house here the other day. That wasn't there. Oh, and they got a ladder going up to it. And the kids all go hooning around the whole area in front of my place, around in front of my place, uh, on their quad quad bikes and quad runners and stuff, you know, and and a couple of trail bikes as well. And and they're okay. They're fine. Like you know, I, I said to them, look, you know, happy you've come around my place and ride around there and stuff. I said, but if the dog chases and catches you, she'll bite you. <laughs> so that, that sort of, you know, gave them something to think about. And I said, you know, just don't come too early, don't come too late. All through the middle of the day you're fine, you know, just come and... Because they're all learning to drive and ride and all that kind of stuff and it's a good place to do it. Well, you wouldn't want to stop them doing that. And, um, you know, apparently there. And I met her mum, their mum, his name I've forgotten now, but Tim's the it's the father, you know, he's a grave digger over in Forbes and she she, um, she runs a funeral business <laughs> uh, which is unusual but everyone, you know, like, people do it, don't they? When I get this thing running properly or handling properly I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to switch these instruments out to the ones on my other bike um, it means I'll lose the odometer reading but I can always, you know write them down and the other one I've got LED lights and stuff in it too you know um, and it'll um, better for you know night riding and stuff like that if I ever if I ever find myself anywhere she, uh, I, don't, I don't know that road I'll have to go up there one day Anyway, the saga continues as it were. Still don't, I don't really know what else to do at the moment. I'll have to think about it. As I said, just play with some tyre pressures. I can go back and look at the, uh, you know, set up, I guess, you know, but uh, the bike's sitting straight up and down, all right, you know. Take your hands off the bars. It goes left, you know, because it's really a bit too much towing. Um... Yeah, interesting. It sort of wallows out when you power out of right-handers. Um, that's curious. You know, I haven't even got anywhere near the point where I'll put it into a corner to see what it, you know, actually does. It's bad enough in a straight line at the moment. 
if they get home and see Tilly, I suppose. Cranky old Tilly. It's like having a bad girlfriend, isn't it? This reminds me, Mick, it was good to hear you've gotten together with your old sweetheart. That's, um, I wish you all the best of luck with that. Why not? What are we going to do with this bike today? I'll we'll stop it here for the moment, I think. And let that dog out. Oh, crikey, there's a lot of work to do around this yard. I keep saying that every time I make a video, because I've done nothing. I've done lots of things, but nothing that shows.